Hi there, Terry Hashimoto here with the V1 powered by Body Track Pressure Mat. And today we're going to show you how to use the velocity chart and the vertical forces in conjunction with the COP trace to help your students improve faster. All right, so the very first thing you're going to do is set impact. I've set impact and I've organized the chart so we have center of pressure, the velocity chart, and the vertical forces all underneath each other so that you can see them in conjunction with the golf swing. This is very important so it makes it a little easier to use. So we measure pressure in three directions, side to side, heel to toe, and up and down. The last time I checked, that's called 3D. All right, so we've set impact, and I, as you can see, we've got the charts one on top of the other. COP chart, velocity chart, and dynamic vert vertical force chart. All one on top of the other. Okay, so the velocity chart breaks the COP chart into its two components, lateral motion and heel to toe motion. Let's look at this. Okay, so when the speed on the top right hand corner is a minus, you're going to your trail side. So I'm looking for pressure transition. A pressure transition ideally would occur when the lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way back. In this case, so far so good. But I do something in this swing that's kind of unique. While I do stop moving to the trail side, I then somehow or another begin to go backwards again. So I've got a funky little move here. You'd never be able to see that without using a pressure mat. But when the lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way back, this number should flip to a positive. Now you're gonna see something really cool here. My number won't flip to right near the top of the golf swing. That's way too late. So pressure transition occurs really late. So the step drill here would be really good for a guy like me. But this was, the swing was kind of deliberate. I wanted to show you all the COP chart. I've got too much pressure in the toes. We know that the lines, uh, the closer the lines going back and the line going through, the less dispersion. Now in the velocity chart, this was, I was able to tell you that my pressure didn't go forward until really late. That's really good to know, but it tells you how fast I was going forward as well. All right, so now what's really interesting here, I'll take it to impact, and this number is now at peak velocity. So once I stop moving laterally, watching the very next frame here, that number is gonna to switch to 164. So once I slow down laterally, what happens to the rotational forces? The rotational forces begin to increase. So this is the beginning of the kinematic sequence. This is a very important number to, to understand. So when you slow down laterally, but you begin to break on your lead side, how hard you break will, help, will determine in part how far you hit the golf ball. So now what I'm looking for is I'm beginning to load, I'm speeding up and I'm slowing down now. Now watch this. Now this number is gonna to flip to a minus before I get the impact. This is a perfect swing to look at. So now the white dots beginning to move forward, backwards in the COP chart. But now I have definitive knowledge that I'm backing up in my irons prior to impact. So this is a really good uh, way to understand the velocity chart. It definitively tells you when you stop moving laterally so that you can understand when the hips begin to rotate the quickest. And it also shows you definitively if you're backing up prior to impact, which the two uh, top two pressure flaws in golf are too much pressure in the toes, backing up in the irons, and the third one, of course, uh, for us old timers is not getting pressure to the lead side fast enough. In this example, I display all three, and I'm gonna show you how right, to fix so that. So for my next swing, prior to it, I'm gonna do a little biofeedback work. So I'm gonna look at the monitor, and Benny, you can zoom in on the monitor there. I'm gonna take swings. I'm gonna try to keep it line on line. Oh, I got into the toes. Got in the heels. Getting into the toes. So now I'm using the monitor to get bow feedback to get a linear trace. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we set impact. Let's take a look at the chart. You're gonna see a different trace, a lot more lateral and linear. Now, but we're gonna look at the velocity chart. So let's see if I actually made some improvements. We're gonna to go to the address position, take the club back, that switches to a minus, 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 minus. All right, now what's interesting is I'm accelerating more quickly. Now that flipped to a positive, so I'm in pressure transition pretty early, that's getting better, okay? When the lead arm is parallel to the ground and the way back, we want that pressure trans moving over to the lead side. It's the remaining as a positive, so so far so good. Okay, much better pressure transition. Still now, but look at that, I catch myself uh, going backwards a little bit, so I've got a little bit of instability issues. Still, okay, now still at the top of the swing, I'm going backwards. 
and I want to be going forward. That's interesting to see. You could never see that without any other tool. Now, I'm, I'm pre my pressure is going to the trail side, even though I'm going, I'm, uh, by this time, in a good player's swing, the pressure is already moving forward. So I'm late getting pressure to the lead side. But what's interesting is I pressed from my trail heel, you're going to see the number there, that number in my trail heel increased back down to the velocity chart, and my speed laterally moved from 192 to 256. Now, what's interesting, too, is I want to go to peak velocity. Now, when that number here switches to 256, you're at peak velocity. So right there, I'm at peak velocity. So the time from peak velocity to impact is called the release factor. And there's less time here than the previous swing. So that means my closing rate is faster, which is going to give me more distance. And if you take a look down at the vertical forces, the max vertical force is uh, higher than it was in the previous swing. So what we're looking for in the velocity chart is understanding, now let's see if I had backup. If that's a minus, no backup in this swing so far. It's a 42, I've completed, completely stopped moving laterally. It's at nine, I'm getting real close to the impact. Let's see, it's at 20, so I'm sliding just forward a little bit to make contact. Boom, no, no negative, no minus in this, in this velocity chart at impact. So just by doing that one biofeedback drill, I was able to obtain a more lateral, more linear type of a trace, increased my lateral motion again here, Benny, from 192 to 256. That's a huge increase. Think of it as miles per hour, and there's a direct correlation between lateral speed and distance. Of course, hip rotation comes into play as well. Thanks. All right, so with respect to the dynamic vertical forces, and again, I think it's important to lay your charts one on top of the other so you can see them all in sequence. When the lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way back, and my lead arm is the blue one, pressure should be max on my trail side. Now the max pressure right here is going to be at that peak. So I don't get max pressure to the trail side till too late. So really, that's too late. So that's a good key point to note. Now what's interesting too is that on the way down, on the way down, when that lead arm is in and around parallel to the ground on the way down, that should be max pressure on the lead side. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at that. So when I go to the max blue spike on the lead side, I'm not too bad, but I'm a little bit late, but not too bad. When the lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way down, so I'm a little bit late getting pressure to my, on my vertical forces on my trail side and I'm a little bit late getting pressure, uh, max vertical forces on my lead side towards impact. And that's not uncommon for a uh, elderly guy like me. So what I'm gonna do here in my final swing is I'm gonna push hard on my, on my trail side early and hard on my lead side immediately after, almost like a double tap, tap, tap. And let's see how that looks. Oh, All right, I need to give the uh, Sheftik family, Mark and Ted, the early adopters of uh, body track, they were the first pioneers, in my opinion, of how to use the vertical forces. And there used to be this thing called the Sheptic board. It's still around where you go lead side, trail side, lead side. It's really like tap dancing for golf. And it's really cool because in this scene, what you're going to see here is a almost linear trace. And Benny will, will, will focus in on the vertical forces. But you can see the COP chart there at the beginning as well. Now, as soon as I take the club back, that pressure is beginning to move forward. All I did was push hard on my trail toe. Now, the, uh, um, now I'm moving into my heel, which is really, really good, from the trail toe to the trail heel. When the lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way back and or before, that's my max trail uh, dynamic vertical force. And in this case, because I pressed hard on my lead side early, I'm a little late still getting to the max lead side pressure. But look, it's almost in sync when the lead arm is parallel to the ground. And look at the spike in the vertical forces. But this is a really good example. And to be honest with you, I started, I started ripe, uh, stripping it when I was, I'm looking at the contact. It's, it's a much better position. Um, Terry Hashimoto, uh, learning how to use the velocity chart, the dynamic vertical forces in conjunction with the COP chart. It's been a pleasure to work with you and I hope this helps uh, understand a little bit better. It probably opens up Pandora's box and you want to ask lots of questions. That's why we're here for it. Terry Hashimoto using the V1 power bar body track pressure mat.